Support the channel on another round boxing store. Click the link in the description. It looks like he's on steroids. Yeah, because he did an interview. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And I was just watching it and he basically, his eyes were like, you know, like when you do steroids, your eyes are like sunken in. His eyes were like sunken really in. He's, he was wide. His eyes were like this. Yeah, next question. Yeah. Like that. Next question. And he was super aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right rage welcome to another episode of another round today we're going to go over our reaction of canelo and triple g the trilogy them hopefully the last and final fight between them two um we're going to go over our kind of reactions to that what we thought about it and also kind of doing a midweek podcast to to kind of uh, preempt the huge fight of the weekend between joseph parker and joe joyce um, taking place in Manchester on Saturday. So very excited about that. Um, first of all, mate, I'm just going to go off of my instant reaction. I was disappointed in the uh, Canelo Triple G fight. Um, I thought it was going to be a big fight. I thought it was going to be very entertaining. I told all my mates to watch it. I, I sent, <laughs> I hyped it up. I got a lot of people watching it that weren't going to watch it. Uh, and it was a bit of a dead end not a dead end but a bit of a dry fight because um to me triple g was very very cautious and kind of shelled up very early on and took him a long time to get into the fight um which to me kind of took away the entertainment value of it because um but we'll come on to that mate. i just want to get your first first reaction i'll, I'll chip in after you've said yeah it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was very much like yourself. I was I was very excited for the for the fight, um, and 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 it it just didn't germinate into the classic uh, end to, to that trilogy because obviously the first two fights were were such classics, um, <laughs> and and you think those two guys they match up so well stylistically, size wise, and everything like that. Like it's it's every time the fight it's going to be a classic, mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't it wasn't the case. I mean. Not even just that fight. I think the whole card was disappointing. None of the fights really caught fire, um, in the in the way I was expecting some of them to. Um, I think it was what I thought, what I was afraid was going to happen happened. Glofkin looked old. He, he he didn't look like he had the the. The, he, I don't think he had the gas tank and I think the commentator mentioned that in the fourth or fifth round like he looks like he's fighting on a quarter tank and I, I think I think it was a quite a good point actually because I thought Glofkin was scared to sort of go to him in that way that he did in the first in the second fight with that pressure because I, I think he thought I'm going to gas out a counter punch from Canelo too so he was constantly worried that Canelo you know, like you're saying, he, he didn't want to throw the right because he was worried that Canelo was going to um, counter him. Yeah, definitely. You know, 100%. And Canelo looked comfortable. I, I only ended up giving Golovkin three rounds or something in the whole fight. Mm -hmm. And um, and to be honest with you, even though Canelo won, he didn't turn the screw at any point. You know, he, he, no. he, he, he kind of, no. I think he piled up points early and he thought, you know what it is? I, I'm going to, I'm going to coast this out. I'm going to box. I'm going to move. I'm going to hit him when I want. I'm going to, and, and, and I'm going to just not take any risks. And yeah. I don't think he came away from that any sort of better off. I, I, I don't like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously he's, he, he's beat Golovkin, but nobody's going to give him real credit for that, especially because the, the first two were controversial. This one, he was older. It was a bit underwhelming. And do you know what it is? Despite Golovkin being underwhelming, what would have really put a stamp on it is if in the later rounds Canelo had turned the screw and either forced a stoppage or done something quite dramatic like dropped him or something like that. But because Canelo didn't do that and he, he just coasted it out, yeah. it, 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 it did have that sort of underwhelming feel to it and it, it wasn't really what we thought it was going to be, you know, yeah. which was just, a classic. Uh, when I looked at the cars and the way that they, they had scored the, the fight, it really depends on how you judge the fight. But me, I'm always looking at who is the one with the more aggression, who's who's stepping forward, who's um, pushing the other guy back and who's on the back foot. And for me, in my opinion, the first eight rounds, Canelo completely just 
he looked like he outpunched and outworked and was more aggressive for the first eight rounds. So I gave the first eight rounds to Canelo. And then I think the last four rounds, Canelo looked more tired. The Triple G finally kind of came out of his shell a bit more and was throwing a bit more. And I gave him the last four. So for me, I think it was like eight, four. Yeah. yeah. And that, and based off that, I can understand 116, 112 kind of scoring. But I think somebody else gave it like 100 and what was it? 115, 113, something like that. Which if it was one more round to Triple G, it would have been a draw. Which to yeah, me it's mad. yeah, it, it, it's absolutely mad. Like even yeah. with yourself, I, I think you're absolutely right. The, the turning point for Triple G was that ninth round. I still scored that round for Canelo because right. this all the other rounds after that I gave to Triple G after 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 the ninth, so the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth I gave to Triple G. But even that ninth round, I thought he only came alive in the last sort of thirty seconds of yeah. that round. Um, but it it, it was it was too little too late you know what i mean and yeah. it was that that scoring is just i don't know what these judges are on man i don't know what they're watching um because i don't understand how how you could give any round he wasn't doing it i mean this will is a surefire way to know that triple g wasn't doing anything because jonathan banks wasn't giving him any tactical instructions he wasn't saying you know double jab slip to this do this do that, da, da. there was nothing like that he just kept saying come on you have to get going now you have to you have to go now you have yeah. to do something because he, 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 he wasn't doing anything you know really um so it was it, it, it was what it was I don't think that super middle weight weight really suits Golovkin I think it slows him down I think he's a natural middleweight yeah um, but despite that you know I think that's probably going to be his last fight in the ring. I think that should that should be his last fight in the ring. He's had a tremendous yeah. career, um, and he's only really got the Canelo blemishes on his record. And despite what anybody says, I do think he won those first two fights. Um, it would it would have been nice for him to to potentially put, uh, give a better account of himself. But at least he didn't get knocked out, and at least he didn't get sort of you know he he didn't go out like that. He still kind of went out with his ha- arm raised to a degree. So, you know, but I, I don't think, I I don't know what Canelo does now because I can't, does he fight Bivol after that? Well, here's the thing, because I was talking about this with my mate and um, a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, he's going to go up, um, higher up. He's going to go for the hev- the bigger fights, the more money fights and light heavyweight. But he's too, here's the problem, his weight, he's too small to be a light heavyweight. He can't he compete is. with light heavyweight. He's way it's too the reach. His reach alone, like he doesn't look. He was even against Bivol. He looks. He looks slow. He didn't look his normal self that way. Um, to come down, you know, if he if he goes, see if he goes up, he has to fight. You know, um, like Kovalev, for example. He wore him out and knocked him out at the end, but he wasn't exactly dominating that fight. And he relied on the fact that Kovalev wasn't as quick as him. You know, you've got a lot of some big guys in the light heavyweight division who are fast as well. And he's not a light heavyweight guy. He's too small. He's not, um, he's not. He could go down. I'd love. I'd actually love to see him against, you know, welterweights like Crawford. And I'd love to see him against the Charlo boys. I'd love to see him against those guys. But I don't know how low he can go down. I think he's like packed. On, I think he. I think he's packed on so much muscle now yeah. that he's going to forever be hovering around that sort of middleweight, super middleweight. Yeah. I think going to light heavyweight is a mistake. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's definitely light heavyweights that he can beat comfortably and that he can look good against. But it's like, are you going to be able? You're not going to be able to unify the light light heavyweight division. You're not going to be able to dominate it. You're not going to be able to look good doing it like you did with the super middleweight. So I'm not sure what the natural next step is. I think if you looked fantastic against Golovkin, you think, okay, maybe he's got a chance against the Bivol, but mm-hmm. the way that he performed against Golovkin, I, I, I can't see him beating Bivol on that performance. Yeah. So it, it, he's, he's in a tricky spot, really, because it's like he's already kind of, he's already taken over. What does he do? He, he yeah. collected titles at middleweight, super middleweight, 
I don't think he can compete at light heavyweight. He's, he's, he's not because weight is such a tricky thing, right? Because if you go too high, it can actually work against you because it slows your body down. If you yeah. go too low, you have no energy. So you yeah. have to find that sort of sweet spot, which I think for Canelo is 160. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's, you know, I think he's the king of the super weight, super middleweight division. He's clearly made that his own weight category. I think he should stay there and be the king of that division. I think the only person that can trouble him maybe is David Benavidez. I think I can see him being a different... I'd, lo- I'd love to see that fight as well. Yeah. That'll be a great fight. So I would like to see how he plays out in his next fight. I'd love to see that fight. I think that's the only one really that can challenge him. You Maybe, maybe one of the Charlo brothers will be a difficult fight for him. I still see Canelo beating everybody in his weight. Uh, category and I don't really think it's fair for him to fight Bivol again because Bivol I thought he was he looked a lot smaller in the first fight I don't I mean I don't want to see him fight the winner of Can- uh, Ramirez. Zero Ramirez yeah do you know what it is though I, I kind of like what Bivol's done by the way like I I, I think what Bivol is doing is he's taking the shine from the Canelo fight, and then he, he's, he's trying to build on that by sort of fight on this little champion series that, that the Zona are doing. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. It's good because it's like yeah. Bivol had no, but Bivol had no profile prior to the Canelo fight, despite it being a really good champion. Um, and it's like rather than kind of just waiting around for Canelo, waiting for Canelo to decide, oh, I'm gonna fight you, and no, I'm not gonna fight you. Like he's taking the shine, the publicity, and he and he and he's kind of rolling that momentum forward. And it, I don't think him fighting. I mean, obviously, if he's offered the Canelo fight, he's not gonna make any any. Nobody fights in the light heavyweight division is gonna generate that kind of money for him. So you'd be a fool not to take it. But I, I would like to see him now really come into his own because I'm going to be following every Bivol fight from now on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where before I knew, I knew who he was, but I wasn't necessarily tuning into every fight yeah. with his career. Yeah. I think with Bivol as well, um, if he can improve on his, I know this sounds kind of like obnoxious to say, but so if he can improve his English a little bit more and, yeah. and become more of a personality in the same way that Canelo has done in the same way that Usyk has, learn English and become a real personality because he's just the funny stuff that they say. If he can yeah. come out and do that, that's going to be a real advantage to him as a, as a persona, as a, as a, as a guy that draws, you know, a lot of uh, eyes and puts a lot of bums on seats because he's a great fighter. You know what I mean? He's an, he's an amazing talent. Um, it's be interesting to see how that plays out, but going back to triple G and Canelo, I think you're right. I agree with you. I think I would like to see Triple G retire now. I don't think he's got anything else to um, prove. Canelo yeah. himself, you know, he's 33 years old. He said uh, in a few years ago in an interview that he's going to keep fighting until he's 37. So he's still got, you know, if he fights a couple of times a year, you know, he's still got a few, quite a lot more fights left in him. Yeah. Um, he's, got, he's got gas in the tank, as they say. Yeah, so he's still he's still he's still got youth in him, but it seems like he's been f- around forever. But he's um, been a pro for a very long time as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he didn't yeah. turn professional. I mean, it like, seems like Mayweather Canelo seems like such a long time ago, bro. It actually, it actually was, wasn't it? Wasn't it like yeah, ten yeah. years ago or something? Yeah, it's insane. Oh, come on, we're getting old. It's insane. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. But a uh, huge, huge fight this weekend. I'm very excited for this. Um, Joseph Parker versus Joe Joyce. Very interesting dynamic. Uh, Joe Joyce, six foot six. Joe Parker, six foot four. Uh, but Joe Parker seems to have the faster hands and Joe Joyce has more power, has more of a yeah. powerful jab. Very interesting, mate. I'm really interested in this fight. Um, I've been looking at a few things and looking at some stats and stuff, which I'll come on to, but I just kind of want to get your take on it as well. Yeah, I'm 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 super super um, intrigued by this fight. Like I, I'm hoping that this is going to be, you know, a heavyweight classic, and this is going to be something because I'm very excited for this fight. I think it's quite an underrated fight, and I, I quite liked the way Joe Joyce 
has approached it as well. You know, he's not taking himself too seriously. I've seen a little video that he put on YouTube about him, like, trash talking and, like, you know, kind of basically kind of poking fun at himself, at, you know, kind of making out like, yeah, I know I'm a bit dry, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a bit of, like, I'm going to make a bit of a joke of it and stuff. So, yeah, it, it's, it's good to see that they're not, they're, they don't seem to have fake needle as well. Like, I hate that these days where you, yeah. you're kind of, they're like forcing it. You know what I mean? Like, I, Can I, I just you, quickly interrupt you really quickly? Yeah, not, that, not that it was fake, but it kind of pissed me off how friendly Canelo and Triple G was at the end of the fight. I don't know yeah. why it just annoyed me. I'm like, you guys you know, are supposed to hate each other, and then all of a sudden you're like best buddies, like shaking each other's hands and cuddling, and you, you know, each you other know, you're amazing, and you know what it is that that, that, necessarily, that didn't necessarily bother me that much because you know I understand the sportsman aspect of it. You know what did piss me off though is Canelo said friendship won. I was like, what, the fuck is what, what does that mean, man? What do you mean, friendship? When you just punched them all over for like 12 rounds, how did friendship win? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was annoying. It was annoying, man. Um, no, I know exactly what you mean. You can always tell when it's fake as well. And I, I, I think they played that up as well. Like, yeah, I did. don't think they look like, like, I, I think probably Golovkin on a professional level had a bit of a needle against him thinking I won those two fights. But yeah. they, were, they were acting as if they didn't like each other for real. And it was like, I yeah. didn't buy that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, do you? What's your problem?" He's, he's like, "I don't really know. I don't. I can't." I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Not they don't even. Anything. They don't even speak good enough English to be mad at each other. That's they the don't thing. even have a reason. They couldn't tell us a reason why they're mad at each other. Yeah, I'm. I'm really, really excited for this fight. Like, I, I think there's there's so many unknowns about Joe Joyce, mm-hmm. and th- you know, there's potential due to his amateur career, due to his 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 professional career so far. Um, you know, he, he's take he's beaten all comers um so far and he's looked good doing it. You know, I think his breakout fight was the Dubois fight where especially in Britain, where it was, you know, Dubois had a lot of hype behind him at the time as well. He looked fantastic. Um so it, it's it's one of those things where Parker's the experienced guy, Parker's the boxer. Parker as the, the the ex-champion. He's been in with Joshua. He's been in with the higher level fighters. He's been in with White. I know those two, he, he lost those two fights, but the, you know there wasn't much in either fight and he, 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 he fought for 12 rounds at probably the highest level that yeah, of the division, you know? So mm-hmm. it's, um, it's, it's going to be really interesting because I think it, it's all about composure i think this fight i think this fight is it's going to be won and lost on composure i think if joe joyce can break parker's composure because i think parker's going to fight in reverse i think parker's going to be moving and pitting hitting and moving and i think if joe joyce can trap him Mm -hmm. or you know break through his defense Mm -hmm. and sort of cause him to panic a little bit I think that, that then at that stage it can be Joe Joyce's fight to win. Um, I am favouring Parker a little bit now. Mm. I, I keep going back and forth. The last yeah. video we made, I, I, I was favouring Joyce, and now I'm favouring Parker because yeah. Parker's looking like I seen him training with Fury, and mm-hmm. he's looking in beast mode. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going back and forth. What do you, what do, what do you make of all this? What do you I think? agree, mate. I was actually thinking, but the more I think about it, and um, I looked into it as well, you know. Joe Parker's never been knocked out as a professional. He's never been knocked out. The only time that he was, um, you know, he was was rocked with Anthony Joshua. But Anthony Joshua, when Joe Parker and Anthony Joshua fought each other, uh, Anthony Joshua had had 20 fights and 20 knockouts. So he'd knocked everyone out. Yeah. And he was very confident. I remember being very him being very confident going into the Joseph Parker fight. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to knock you out. Of course I am. I knock everyone out. And he knocked him down, but he didn't knock him out. No. So are we saying that Joe Joyce has got more knockout power than Anthony Joshua? Because if he doesn't, I don't know if he's going to knock him out. And the more yeah. I think about it, the more I think about it thinking, well, Joseph Parker's got more He's got he's faster and he output he's faster, he punches more per round on average. Yeah. So if we're going off that, then I'm thinking he's gonna win on points. 
you know, Dylan White as well, he might not be the most technical. And I, I think he had a terrible night against you. You know, I just never got going at all in that fight. But he hits very hard as well. Like, like, like Dylan White is known to be a really sort of physical, up-close fighter. I mean, the thing to think about as well is, is Joe, Joseph Parker hasn't lost since 2018. Yeah. Quite a long time. And he's on. he's off the back of five... Five or six convincing wins. I know he didn't. He, he he's not a knock, knockout artist, but that's not really his style. He just more of a he just wins on points. He does. He's a bo- he's, he's he's a boxer puncher. Is he? Boxer. He's got a lot of power. Don't get me wrong. He has got power, but I I think I think he's just going to go for the points. I think he's going to start off really fast. I think he's going to be really quick at the start of the round. Joe Joe Joyce is kind of slow when he starts the fight, and I and I feel like. He's going to do another thing like Canelo did, where he's just going to rack up points and he's going to get round after round. And before you know it, it's going to be a situation where Joe Joyce needs the knockout. He's got a camp now. He's over in England. He's got Andy Lee. He's got Tyson Fury. He's got a proper camp behind him. Yeah. You know, where, where before he was, I felt like he. You know, he, he was kind of on the outside looking in almost. Where now he's on the inside. Andy Lee, who 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 is just you know you know a, a boxing genius having a guy like fury motivating him training him keeping him fresh so mm. I, I think i think this is just the, the the worst possible time to fight someone like joe parker because when joshua fought him yeah he was world champion but he was young he didn't seem to have that proper setup around him that proper camp around him you know he had a different trainer he didn't have andy lee at the time um so it, I, I i think he was just kind of doing it all on his own doing it like you know he, he had his own sort of promoter um, and everything like that, where now he seems to have way more of a structured fight camp and a team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that might play into it as well. I think, you know, settle Joe Park, a happy a happy fighter as a dangerous fighter at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah you're right. And he's a, he's a natural athlete. I mean, he, he looks, he, he could be a, a, a Maori New Zealand rugby player. He, could, he looks like he just just walk into the into the All Blacks rugby team. He looks damn he, good in a suit too, as well, Joe Parker. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, he's a natural. I mean, no he's a homo, natural, but yeah, he's a natural athlete, and also, I think it was a very smart move moving to Morecambe, training with Tyson Fury. I mean, he's the best in the heavyweight division. You're training with with him. You're taking notes from Kronk and also training with Andy Lee. Like Andy Lee has got an incredible record, being in with the best of them of his time. He's got so much experience. Uh, also being trained in Kronk style as well. So I think he's, I think I just favor Parker in this, man. And yeah. I probably put, I might put a bet on it because a lot of people are, oh. yeah, a lot of people are thinking it's going to be a Joe Joyce knockout. But I, I, the more I think about it, I think, oh, I see him winning on points. It's weird. That was my that was my initial takeaway from it. I thought, you know what it is, and you mentioned it in the in, in the previous podcast. Actually, you know that 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 jab, and yeah. I thought at some point that jab is is, is going to get to Parker. And the more and more I thought about it, I thought actually I don't know if it is. Like Parker's a really more underrated mobile. boxer. He, he's very mobile. He's got the edge and speed. He's he, he's got the ability to kind of box and move. He's got the quicker hands. He's got the quicker feet, and I, I, I just think he's he's in a place in his career where he's kind of he's, he's got the momentum on his side a little bit. So I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna. It's it's it makes a very intriguing fight. You know, it yeah. really does. No man, just that I'm super excited for it. I, I hope because I was super super excited for the the Triple G Canelo fight. So I'm hoping this weekend. You know, we get that yeah. fight that we've been waiting for, that we've been pining for for the last couple of weeks. You know, yeah. a, a, a real tear up. I, I do think, I do think these guys are going to deliver because I think for Parker, he needs to win this fight. Like if, if he if he's not beating Joe Joyce, I'm not. I'm sorry. I know Joe Joyce is, is a highly rated fighter, but mm-hmm. if he's not beating Joe Joyce, he's not going to ever capture heavyweight gold again. Yeah. And with Joe Joyce. He's got that auto protect, you know. He's looking for those fights against the Joshuas. He's look, he's yeah. looking for those fights against the Furies, uh, yeah. and he's looking, you know, for his own his, his own glory. So, and I, I, it's the and it's a WBO interim title fight, which means that they whoever yeah. wins becomes mandatory for Usyk. So that means they will get a title yeah. shot against Usyk. So, 
um, provided Tyson Fury doesn't beat him in, in, in between yeah. there. There's a lot to play for, though, isn't there? You know, in terms of status, in terms of ranking in the heavyweight division, that, that there's a lot to play for in this fight. There is, mate. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an awesome match. I'm mean, gonna can't wait for this weekend, and that's been another episode of another round. Like, comment, and subscribe to another round boxing channel. Oh yeah, baby, let's go.